Welcome back to the Hardware Unboxed News Corner. I've been traveling a bit this week, so haven't been keeping up with absolutely everything going on in the tech space, but a couple of interesting things did happen this week that I'll be talking about, including the first benchmarks for KB Lake G with RX Vega graphics, ASRock's official announcement of Phantom Gaming cards, Nvidia Quadro GV100, and more. So first up, let's talk about those ASRock Phantom Gaming graphics cards. As expected, ASRock has entered the graphics card market as an AMD add-in board partner, and their very first set of four Phantom Gaming cards covers the Radeon RX 500 series. Unfortunately, there are no custom Vega cards here with ASRock instead covering the mid-range and entry-level product segments first, but hopefully that'll happen further down the track. The naming scheme for these new cards, it's pretty simple. The RX 550 and RX 560 carry the Phantom Gaming brand with a simple 2G at the end of the name, and that indicates the memory capacity. While the RX 570 and RX 580 are Phantom Gaming X cards with 8G OC at the end. Despite the lower end RX 550 and RX 560 not carrying an OC in their name, they are also overclockable like the higher end cards using a setting in ASRock's overclocking utility. In fact, that's how you'll access the factory overclock on all of these cards. They'll ship with AMD default clocks and a simple button in the utility will push those clocks up by 40 or 50 megahertz. ASRock has developed the coolers for all the graphics cards themselves. The RX 570 and 580 get a dual fan solution with an aluminium radiator, copper base, and three heat pipes. The RX 560 and RX 550 use a smaller single fan design with an aluminium radiator that's designed to be compatible with mini ITX systems. ASRock even mentions premium thermal grease, and of course there are DisplayPort, HDMI, and DVI outputs on these cards. You'll be able to purchase Phantom Gaming cards in Q2 2018, at least let's hope so with the current mining situation. No pricing has been announced, probably that's so ASRock can set the price to match whatever is the going market price at the time of launch. Earlier today, the first reviews went live for Intel's latest Hades Canyon NUC powered by KB Lake G. We should be getting a sample soon to test for ourselves, but I thought I'd quickly go through some results to show how the NUC and the Core i7-8809G performs. So a quick recap, the i7-8809G is the highest end KB Lake G processor. On the CPU side, there are four cores and eight threads with a base clock of 3.1 and a maximum turbo of 4.2 gigahertz. The biggest inclusion is the AMD Radeon RX Vega M GPU with 24 compute units, a base clock of 1063 megahertz and a boost clock of 1190 megahertz, paired with four gigabytes of HBM2. This all fits within a 100 watt TDP and there's even Intel integrated graphics for low power tasks when the AMD GPU isn't required. KB Lake G is specifically designed to provide decent levels of graphics performance when paired with that Intel H series like quad core CPU on a single package, so that OEMs looking to build laptops and small form factor PCs have a single integrated compact solution capable of 1080p gaming. It should be noted that while the NUC, as expected, uses the top tier 100 watt KB Lake G processor, most laptops will opt for the 65 watt variant with a 20 CU Vega GPU instead. Looking at a number of reviews, most of which have fairly limited test results, it seems the i7-8809G delivers GPU performance between an NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti and a GTX 1060, though on the closer end to the GTX 1050 Ti. That's impressive for what is essentially an integrated GPU, and the CPU also appears to perform well and edge ahead of the popular i7-7700HQ. Hopefully our unit will arrive soon so we can provide you with our own set of results across a range of games. So at GTC 2018 this week, Nvidia announced the Quadro GV100 Professional GPU, which in many ways is similar to the other Volta products Nvidia has announced so far, the Titan V and the Tesla V100. All three use the massive GV100 GPU with 5,120 CUDA cores, though the Quadro GV100 provides a huge 32 gigabytes of faster HBM2, up from 12 gig on the Titan V, which I guess explains why it costs $9,000 instead of just $3,000. This new 
Quadro card will provide 14.8 teraflops of single precision performance and 7.4 teraflops of double precision, plus you get 118.5 teraflops of tensor processing. If you can afford two of these beasts, you can connect them together with NVIDIA's NVLink 2 to pull resources and demolish those compute workloads. NVIDIA also announced the DGX2 at GTC, which is a deep learning system that for some reason NVIDIA calls a GPU. Anyway, it actually has a bunch of GPUs in it, 16 Tesla V100s to be precise, along with dual Xeon Platinum CPUs, 1.5 terabytes of system memory, and 30 terabytes of NVMe SSDs. When you pull the Tesla V100 resources, you get 512 gigabytes of HBM2 and two petaflops of tensor compute performance. This whole system only draws 10 kilowatts of power and will be available for a cheap $400,000 in Q3 this year. So I know a lot of you guys out there will be rushing out to purchase one of those. Notebook check. Discovered NVIDIA has quietly launched a slower variant of their MX150 discrete GPU that has been designed for 13-inch notebooks. The 1D10 variant is the standard model we've been seeing in large laptops for a while while the 1D12 variant uh, has a more strict power limit so it can fit into smaller, thin and light systems. While there are no published TDPs for each variant, the 1D10 is approximately 25 watts, while the 1D12 appears to be more like 10 watts. This power limit means clock speeds are reduced on both the GPU and memory, down from 1532MHz on the GPU boost and 1502MHz on the memory, to just 1038MHz boost and 1253MHz memory. Notebook Check says this causes a 20-25% performance hit relative to the fully-fledged MX150. Annoyingly as well, NVIDIA doesn't have a separate brand for the 1D12 variant, so there's no way for a consumer to know whether they're getting the full MX150 or the slow MX150. However, at least luckily, so far the 1D12 has only been spotted in 13-inch devices. This new 1D12 MX150 entering the market seems to coincide with the announcement of a lot of 13-inch laptops with the MX150 inside, so I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA specifically launched this new variant to combat Ryzen Mobile and its integrated graphics that already blows away Intel's 8th gen parts. The new MX150 allows NVIDIA to pair up with Intel for faster graphics in 13-inch notebooks, and that allows both companies to compete more strongly with AMD and even keep AMD, which is a relative newcomer, completely out of the market. This week, we ran a couple of quick polls on Twitter and YouTube about the GPU and GPU configurations in your systems, just to get a better idea of what you guys are actually using, and hopefully that will be a bit more accurate than the Steam hardware survey that's influenced recently by a lot of different factors. We asked you guys whether you were using an AMD Radeon or NVIDIA GeForce graphics card, and the results were pretty similar in both polls. On YouTube, we got 11,000 responses, with 68% of you saying you currently have an NVIDIA GPU and 32% AMD. That number was slightly higher for NVIDIA on Twitter, with 2.6 thousand responses at 71% versus 29%. We also asked you whether you use Crossfire or SLI multi-GPU setups or opt for just a single GPU. On YouTube, from 13,000 responses, 90% of you said you don't use either tech, with 6% for SLI and 5% for Crossfire, presumably with some strange rounding there by YouTube. On Twitter, from 2,000 votes, 88% opted for neither tech, 8% for SLI and 4% for Crossfire. It's not surprising to see NVIDIA still the favorite GPU of our viewers, though their market share is nowhere near as high as in the Steam hardware survey. I was a little surprised to see around 10% of people still use Crossfire or SLI, and considering how poorly these technologies are supported in modern games, but I guess judging by a few of the comments, it does seem a fair of those systems that you guys have been telling us about are using older graphics cards in a dual GPU setup. A few quick topics to jump into now, and this one I'm really excited about. Chrome 66 will block unwanted auto-playing videos with sound from all of those annoying news websites. 
Autoplaying videos with sound on a news article is extremely annoying and such a garbage practice, so it's great to see Google cracking down on those internet criminals. Google have outlined their rules for when autoplaying videos will be blocked. I'm not gonna list them here, but it all makes sense. Basically, videos with no sound will be allowed, and videos with sound will only be allowed if you frequently visit a site and choose to play their videos. Sounds pretty good to me. Xiaomi, known for their smartphones and other products, has launched a gaming laptop. It has a 15.6 inch display, a seventh gen Intel Core i7 CPU, and Nvidia GeForce GTX 1060 or GTX 1050 Ti graphics. The 1060 model costs 8,999 yuan or about 1,400 USD. It looks fairly okay from the outside, though it's unlikely it will go on sale outside of China, at least for now. Final topic for this week, Foxconn has acquired Belkin in a deal worth $866 million in cash. Belkin also owns the Linksys and Wemo brands, so all of those products will now come under the control of Foxconn. An interesting move, though Foxconn does want to expand its portfolio, and the company said they will increase the R&D budget for Belkin and grow their product line. That's it for this week's News Corner. If you like this weekly segment, don't forget to subscribe to watch it every Friday and consider supporting us through our Patreon at patreon.com slash hardwareunboxed. I'll see you in the next one.